What war crimes do the good guys in movies commit against the evil faction? In Stargate Atlantis, the goodies capture a wraith and perform medical experiments on him. A recent example I can think of is in Without Remorse, where you are supposed to believe Michael B. Jordan is making a heroic one-man stand during a black ops mission in Russia, until you realize that the Russian police and soldiers are responding to what appears to be a terrorist incident rather than the movie's villain blowing himself up, and have no clue who is shooting at them. Is it really a Tom Clancy IP without a few war crimes sprinkled in under the guise of heroism? James Bond commits multiple acts of torture and frequently threatens unarmed people with assault or even death. This is played almost as a satire in the later movies where he is portrayed unambiguously as a complete sociopath. In a sense, that's getting back to the source material, the original Bond in Ian Fleming's books was portrayed as being cold and ruthless and quite possibly a sociopath of sorts. Go back and watch the early Sean Connery movies. He kills with abandon and strangles a woman with her own bikini top to get info from her. And cheats at golf so what does that tell you? Cheating at golf is the last straw. Daniel Craig has been quoted as saying he doesn't view Bond as a hero, his main job is an assassin. In Star Wars The Clone Wars, all of them. When I remembered that General Grievous staged an attack on a medical facility I began to wonder if the writers had a checklist of all the war crimes they could fit into that show. I'm fairly certain they did. They also would attack already disabled ships and crap too. They do say that Star Wars is based off of World War II, face with monocle. Battle of Umbara was basically space Vietnam. Battle of Geonosis as well, all three. The Republic commits war crimes all the time and so do the Rebels. Star Wars is full of war crimes on all sides. Admittedly the events in Star Wars happen in a galaxy long time ago and far, far away, so I'm fairly certain the factions are not party, and therefore bound, to the Geneva Conventions. There's a YouTube playlist that details all war crimes in the Clone Wars show broken down by season, you'll see if I can find the link. Edit, found it. YouTube link. The Republic is literally creating human beings with a short lifespan, puts a control chip in their brain and indoctrinates them to feed them into the meat grinder. That is 40k level dark. Also, everyone has way more than necessary sapient droids that get treated like slaves at best. The basic battle droids could probably beat the Turing test and even the Jedi kill them basically for sport. In the Star Trek Discovery pilot they topi trap dead bodies which is a war crime. Yes maybe in the future the Geneva Convention has been updated, they actually name check it still existing in 1 by 03, but you'd expect it to change for the better, not give the okay for the same tactics ISIS use. They also try to genocide a whole planet, but compromise to overthrowing the legitimate ruling government. In Star Trek Enterprise Archer threw a guy into an airlock and decompressed it until he talked. The fact the crew went along with killing an entire planet was also a crime and how the writers got away with that little tidbit always bothered me. They had a duty to at the very least refuse to carry out the order, and even relieve Sisko of command. He was completely out of line, and Eddington was completely correct, Sisko had a personal vendetta. Just because the USS Malinche had been attacked was besides the point, it didn't give Sisko the right to go off fully cock throwing biogenic weapons at habitable planets even though the Maquis had done the same thing. Not surprising since they were acting as terrorists. That none of the senior officers were court-martialed, spelling? Tells me either someone forgot to mention it in their report, or Starfleet turned a blind eye to it because it was some cast-off planet being used by the Maquis. E, and if you really want to get pissed off at an episode, watch Valiant, S6E22. Yikes, I spent far too much time watching a 20-year-old show. I better go do something more productive like getting drunk. Isn't Ender's game about tricking a child into committing genocide? Technically Xenocide. The Emperor of Mankind approves of Xenocide. Blood for the Blood God. Skulls for the Skull Throne. Milk for my Corn Flakes. Hey buddy, Teresa nice inquisitor down the hall that wants to talk to you. 
Well, the second book is all about trying to make things right by finding a new planet for the queen. Always thought Speaker for the Dead had some really neat concepts. Yes, but the terrible psychological effects that has on Ender is the whole point of the book. Something the movie sadly neglected. The end of the movie takes place two-thirds of the way into the book. A huge plot arc of that series is Ender trying to figure out how to deal with his own internal grief at what he had done while simultaneously being praised as a hero. Torture is typically a default. Protagonist doesn't have time to play by the rules, so he tortures info out of the person. Hollywood loves to show that torture is the only way to get info out of someone when it's actually not only a war crime, but the least reliable method. Captain American used the steak and potatoes method. Edit, so this got way more popular than I expected and people thought I meant the steak and potatoes method, so to clarify, by steak and potatoes method I mean they gave the bad guy, Dr. Zola, steak and potatoes to win him over to get him to reveal secrets. It's the good cop of good cop, bad cop or the carrot part of the carrot or the stick. Opposite of torture and has been found to be a lot more effective than torture. Is that an actual psychological tool used in interrogations? If so, does it have any tendency toward cooperation from the person being interrogated? There is a man who works for the, I believe, could be FBI, NSA slash etc. CIA who specializes in the steak and potatoes method. He talks to members of terrorist organizations who are about to go in for life and offers them things such as funded college education for their children or perhaps a monetary fund for their spouse and infant children in return for information about the crime S, or case S. As far as I'm aware his success rate is good. I'm quite sure he doesn't offer things of such extravagance on the daily or unless the crime is Geneva scale but you understand the point I'm making I'm sure. Steak and potatoes does seem to work in at least enough cases to be viable. Edited to add a source, his name was Jack Coonan, and he worked for the FBI. You can see him in this last week tonight video at exactly 12 o'clock. Web link. You should read about Hans Scharf. He was an interrogator for the Nazis, but he was extremely effective, so much so that the US military has incorporated some of his techniques. Basically, he tells the individual what interrogation techniques they are taught to use, and then lets them know that he refuses to use them. He then lets them know that if he doesn't get information, he has to turn them over to another interrogator. He then tells them he just wants them to be safely placed in the POW camp. Then he basically just becomes friends with them, telling them jokes, homemade goods, getting to know them etc. So basically, good cop, bad cop. But they haven't seen bad cop yet. Your mind can be a more effective bad cop than they can ever think of. The terror of what you will conjure up will do all the work. Meanwhile this nice guy in front of you just wants to chat and really doesn't want anything bad to happen to you. Fake surrendering and harming someone after they have surrendered. In the last Hunger Games, didn't the good guys drop medical supplies only just for half of them to be bombs to make the bad guys look bad? Yeah the committed a really damn nasty false flag attack against children. To be frank it is a major plot point that turns Katniss against them. She even shoots the head of District 13 afterwards. I mean she literally watches these fake supply bombs kill her sister who's a volunteer medic. Absolutely don't hold anything against her for assassinating that lady. Also, her sister was not old enough to be a volunteer army medic according to District 13, who are so militant about rules. Coin was a control freak, so she would have had to specifically made the decision to send Prim, and also been aware of the tactic they were going to use. Inglorious bastards, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to scalp people? Hmm this is a good answer because they are actually in a war. A lot of answers here are just regular crimes. The bastards scalp dead, dying soldiers, they execute prisoners of war, and disfigure survivors. Even Landa has a line near the end during the make a deal scene, something like as of right now, your plan, which some would call a terrorist plot is still a go, and I mean he's got a point the plan is to assassinate the entire Nazi high command by bombing a theater full of citizens. Inglorious Bastards is the American version of a Nazi propaganda movie. We revel in them killing Nazis while in the movie the Nazis watch a movie reveling in the killing of allied forces. Probably Tarantino's best. I firmly believe that Rain telling Udovich. 
You know something, Budovich? This might be my masterpiece. Is Tarantino talking to us? Edit. I guess because I have to I don't think I'm having some savant filmic breakthrough here. I think it's pretty unambiguous. If it's not us, the regular viewers, then it's the critics, maybe specifically a can he's talking to. Either way, I'm glad to see I'm not alone in this interpretation. Whenever someone fakes a surrender. Edit. It's disturbing how many people don't know that you can't fake a surrender. Edit 2. Thanks for the awards and the karma. Give me all the internet points. Perfidy is a favorite in the Clone Wars. Obi-Wan is a master of the fake surrender. I just got past Kong Prell and Obi-Wan did the fake surrender at least three times by then. That's season 4. There are so many war crimes in TCW, and those are just the ones shown. Cough Anakin cough twice. A lot of good guys flirt with, or outright commit, torture and interrogation sessions. Reminder, it's considered bad to physically assault someone when they can't fight back. No matter what the circumstances. And in the real world, it. Web link. Torture makes people say whatever the torturer wants them to say, not what they actually need to hear. People who don't know anything will come up with the most elaborate stories to make it stop. Not to mention guerrilla forces are quite selective with information to prevent spies and defectors from gleaning anything useful. Heck I wonder if a guerrilla commander ever deliberately gave a fighter false information, let him be captured and have the false information tortured out of him so the opposing forces would walk right into an ambush. That scene in Saving Private Ryan where they shoot the unarmed Czech conscripts. Literally a war crime. And a damn tragedy. Could have happened in real life too. Imagine being forced to fight for Germany and just when you think it's over you get killed by your perceived saviors. Not a movie, but Anakin Skywalker in TCW is notorious for falsely surrendering to the Separatists. He did this in Season 7 Episode 9 to lure the tactical droid out of hiding on a battlefront before the Siege of Mandalore. In Saving Private Ryan, when some Germans get killed after surrendering after D-Day landing. I'm pretty sure they weren't even German, they were forcefully conscripted from other countries. What they actually said, please don't shoot me. I am not German, I am Czech, I didn't kill anyone. I am Czech. And they said it in Czech. Inglorious Bastards. Beating surrendered combatants with a baseball bat is most likely a war crime. I think the point in Inglorious Bastards was to lampshade the acceptance of brutality by good guys. I love the scene in which the Nazis watch the propaganda film in Shoshana's theater, and they are all cheering and clapping like idiots at the obviously romanticized Nazi hero mowing down a lay soldiers after a lay soldiers, then you realize you, as a viewer, have been doing essentially the same thing. Anakin's list is a little intense laughing out loud. It's a shame they butchered the movie, the book is so good. Where they dress up as soldiers of the evil empire and proceed to kill enemy soldiers who think think that they are on their side. Looking at you Star Wars. Edit, thanks for all the upvotes. If they had a planet destroying laser, that would be a war crime I'd happily commit. This regards cop movies more, but I've recently re-watching some absolute bangers from the 1980s, including Lethal Weapon, Tango and Cash and Action Jackson, and it's hilarious how insane and borderline sadistic the cops are. Have you ever considered what a psycho John McClane is, to kill some dude, put a Christmas elf hat on him and right now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho on his shirt and die hard? It's such a funny 80s trope that cops were supposed to be these rule-breaking fanatics. To be fair, he's not working as a cop at that, that moment. He's just a pissed off dude with cop skills at a Christmas party where he already watched these guys shoot a man in cold blood. Also, now he has a machine gun. UPKA. They also lampshade the fact that he's not a good cop. You won't hurt me. You're a policeman, there are rules for policemen. Yeah, that's what my captain keeps telling me. 
superheroes who destroy half the town before the villain even does anything. There was actually a Superman comic where he heard on the news about a hurricane that destroyed houses because they weren't built to standard, and that the government was going to build new houses for the displaced residents and ensure the new ones were up to standard. So he flies off to a nearby poor district in town, told the residents to get out, and then proceeded to destroy the entire district to ensure that the government would build them new, better houses. Yeah that was an actual comic. The clone army that the Jedi lead was unambiguously child soldiers. Every time they kill a minion. Nobody cares when the ninja army gets slaughtered, but the moment the big bad steps into the room, suddenly they all have a conscience. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.